Today I'm gonna to teach you how to insert images inside a website. Now there is a couple of different ways we can do images. Either we can just insert an image into a website using a image tag, or we can create a background image inside a container. There's of course some pros and cons to doing either. Uh, and it really depends on what kind of purpose you have when it comes to creating images. So the rule of thumb here is to ask yourself, is the image a piece of content that actually belongs to the website that the user should be able to find using Google because it has to be semantic and you have to be able to describe the content or is it more of a decorative background element that's not really important to the content of the website but just more of a decorative thing. So there's a, a couple of things to consider there. So what I'll do is I'll show you how to actually insert an image and then I'll show you how to create a background image using CSS afterwards because we do use CSS when it comes to creating background background images. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go inside my body tag here and I'm going to create a image tag. So we're just going to say IMG and then you can see it pops up here as a suggestion. So I can just click enter or tap. Now inside the image tag, you can see that we have two different attributes that pops up automatically. And these are actually the two mandatory tags and people do tend to not see the, the second one as being as important as the first one because they can't really see a direct change inside the website when you use it. But this is a very important attribute to have when it comes to describing what is inside your image because when people need to find it on Google, then of course we need to actually be able to see what is inside the image. So in this case here, we do need to make sure we have these two tags. So inside the source tag, we just simply include a link to the image. And if I were to go inside my root folder, which again is what we call the folder for the website, you can see that I do have my index file and I do also have my CSS file, which you, you should also have because that's what we've done so far. But I did actually went ahead and created a second folder, which is called IMG for image. Now you could also just spell out image or whatever you want to do. You don't really need to call it something specific. But the important thing here is that whenever you use any kind of images inside your website, make sure they go inside your root folder. Don't link to anything inside your computer somewhere because that's going to start messing things up for you. So with this, I did actually create a image folder. And in here, I have a picture of Basse, which is my dog. And he's sitting right here next to me inside a uh, office chair. So what I want to do is I want to create a path to Basse which is a PNG image. And when it comes to images, you can really link to any kind of image file, whether it being a PNG, JPEG, a GIF or GIF or however you might say it. Um, so you can actually just go ahead and link to any kind of image file that you want to include inside your website. So what I'll do is I'll go inside my source and I'll say that from inside my index file. So remember, you have to start with this file is what is the path from this file to my image. So right now I need to go inside an image folder forward slash and then I can grab basse.png and I can also describe him. So we just need to come up with a description. So we can say bulldog named basse just to give it some kind of description here. So I can save this and if I were to actually go ahead and go inside my website you can now see that I have a image of Besse, but there is kind of an issue here because it is kind of big inside the, the website. Uh, so what we can do is we can actually scale it down using a second attribute, or we can do it using CSS. So if we were to go in here, we could just include a width attribute and just set it to something like 200 pixels. I don't think we need to write pixels because it is automatically gonna see it as pixels. So we can just go and delete those and go inside the browser, refresh it. And now you can see that it's 200 pixels wide. You can also create a height if you wanna do that instead. Uh, but my general thing is that I like to just do it using CSS. So let's go ahead and do that instead. So instead of having a image tag, I'm gonna go ahead and create a class. So to equal to double quotes. And I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one image. So what I can do is I can go inside my main.css, say I have a class called image curly brackets. And in here I can go ahead and say, I want the width to be, let's make it 300 pixels this time. So 300 pixels. If we were to go back inside my browser, you can now see that if I were to refresh it, that we now have it just a little bit larger than it was before. And of course, this is something you can hold and drag. So you can drag it up there and actually see it if you wanna do that. So this is a real image that you have inside your website. And of course you can do the same things as we talked about in the previous episode, you know, when it comes to moving around the image inside the website. So we could give it a margin left and give it a 200 pixel margin and go inside the website, refresh it. 
And then you'll see that we can just go ahead and apply all the different CSS that we learned in the previous episode. So now let's talk about background images because this is a little bit larger of a subject than, uh, than what we just talked about here. Um, so let's go ahead and delete this image. And instead, I'm gonna go ahead and create a div. And again, this could be any kind of HTML element. You could also create a container or something else. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a simple div. So I'm gonna go in here, give it a class. And this is going to be image because we have that one already in here. So why not reuse it? And I'm gonna go ahead and say that we have a width set to 300 pixels. And I'm gonna give it a height set to, let's say, 500 pixels because I want it to be a little bit unproportionate to, to kind of demonstrate something here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and I'm also just gonna go and delete the margin. I don't see a reason for it. And then I'll go ahead and create a background dash image. In here, we need to create a URL for this particular image. So instead of it being source, like it is inside the image tag, in this case here, it needs to be URL. So again, we have to go from the CSS file and then into the image folder, which means that in this case, because our CSS file is inside a separate folder, we actually need to go back one directory, and then we can go inside the image folder and simply grab basa.png. And if we were to go inside my website, you can now see that it looks like this. And you may think, okay, so that seems weird. Why is it only cutting off the corner? And you can really see our dirty counters here and everything. So, you know, how do we scale this down? so we can actually see it properly inside this box here. So what we can do is we can go back in and we can also go ahead and include a second piece of styling, which is background dash, um, let's say size. So what you can do here is you can go and give it a percentage. You can give it something called contain or cover. It really depends on what you, you want to do. Uh, so in this case here, we can go ahead and say, let, let's say 30% because I want to demonstrate something here. If we were to go back inside the browser, refresh, you can now see that it starts duplicating the image. And that's because it is repeating the image inside my container when there's extra space left over inside the container. So if we don't want that to happen, we can go inside our CSS file and say that we want the background dash repeat to be no repeat. Or you can pick any of the other ones. So if you want the Y axis to repeat only or the, the X axis, then you can pick that one, of course. But in this case here, I'd like to have no repeat. So if we were to go back inside the website, you can now see that we only have one, but it's not really taking up all the space inside my container here. So what I can do is I can actually go in and instead of saying a percentage, I can go ahead and say something like cover. So we do that, go inside the website. You can now see that it actually covers the entire um, container. Now it is cutting off some of the image though, because if I were to actually open up the image here so you can actually see it, you can actually go ahead and see that there is a little bit of spacing on the right side of Bessie here, but it's not actually picking that up inside of here. And that's because when we choose cover as a background sizing, then it just makes sure that the image is actually covering the entire box to be created. So there's no white space left over that the image is not covering, which means that depending on the width and the height of the box, the insert the background image, it will cut off some part of it. So how can we make this just look a little bit better? Cause he's kind of like shifting to the right side of my website. What if I want him to be centered inside my container here? What I can do is I can go back in and I can say background, position and set this one to center. So if I do that, I can go and go back in and I'll see that he is centered inside my container. Now I know he is kind of small, so let's just go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can actually see what is going on here. This is probably how it would look like on your screen because I am using a slightly bigger monitor here. Uh, so this is the, the normal size for a 1080 monitor. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to do something really cool when it comes to using CSS instead of a image tag, which is you can actually create a hover effect when you put your cursor on top of the image. So right now, as you can see, we have this image tag, it has a background and all these things. But what if I want to do a hover effect? For example, if I want to change the image to black and white when I hover on top of it, or you can just swap it out with any kind of image because the whole point here is just that you can swap two images out when you hover with your cursor. So what I wanna do is I want to create a hover effect. And this is actually something that we call a pseudo element 
uh, or pseudo class. And basically what a pseudo class is when it comes to CSS is when you take the same styling, you paste it down below, and after the path, so in this case here, my class image, I'm going to add a colon, and then you can see we have all these different pseudo classes here that we can you can actually pick from. Uh, in this case here, I want to create something called hover, so you can actually see it pops up down here. And basically what this one does is that it adds an effect when we do something to this particular CSS in here. So in this case here, when I hover my mouse cursor on top of the element, then I want something to happen. So what I want to happen is not to change any of the width or the heights. And I'm not gonna change any of these background size, repeat or positions, but I do want to change the background image. So the thing that you want to change is the only thing that needs to stay inside this particular styling down here. So in this case here, I want to swap it out with a second image that I just created. So now as you can see, I have a second image called Besson-BW, which is for black and white. And what I can do is I can go in here and just link to that particular one, save it. So now if I go back inside the browser and refresh the website and put my mouse cursor on top of the image, you may notice that it is now changing. Uh, but you may also have caught something else, which is that when you do this, it is actually flickering the first time. So just to refresh it again, in case you didn't catch it the first time, if I put my mouse cursor on top of the image the first time after the page loads, it is going to flicker. And that is kind of a weird, annoying little issue that you can get around. And I will show you how to do it. Just know that we're kind of stepping into a little bit of a, um, um, a deeper water here. So what we can do to fix any kind of background hover effects that might flicker when you do it is that you can go back inside your CSS and we're going to use another pseudo class that can be used in order to fix this. Now the reason it's flickering the first time after you load up the browser is because it's actually loading in the hover image when you put your mouse cursor on top of the image. So it's actually loading it in, which is why we get this little delay, which, which kind of looks like a flicker. So what you can do is you can actually preload images into a website. And there's many different solutions to how you can do this. Uh, you can put a image on top of the image and then just remove the opacity or you can preload images. There's many different ways and suggestions on how to do this. But the way that we're going to solve it is by preloading the image. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into top of my CSS file. And again, if you don't fully understand what we're about to do, don't worry too much about it. You can just kind of like copy it down and then you have this piece of CSS in the future for when you have to do this. Uh, but essentially what I want to do here is I want to use a pseudo element called after, which is just like how we used hover down here. You just kind of write something like body, which is the body tag that we have inside uh, our index file. And you can actually see that it loads up here. So you can actually see we have it right there. So we're gonna write after. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to actually load in the content that I want to actually load in. And we can do that using a piece of styling called content. And then in here, we can just simply link to any kind of image that we want to actually load in. We could also do this using text or any other kind of means. Uh, but in this case, yeah, I just want to load in a image. So for example, I can take my image that I have down here that I'm actually trying to load in as a hover thing. Uh, load that inside the browser. And what it's actually doing right now, if I were to save this and go inside my browser, is you're gonna notice that it actually pops it in when I reload and refresh my browser. So you can see it's actually down here, uh, which is not really what we wanted to do. So it's actually putting it inside our website. And that's because it's preloading it and actually putting it after the body tag. And we don't want this to happen. So what we can do is we can actually go ahead and hide the content. And some suggestions online did actually say that you could go in and say display none, which is what we talked about in a previous episode you could do in order to rip out content from the web page. So if you do this, we actually load in the image, but we don't actually show it inside the website. But this is not going to solve the issue for you. So as you can see, it actually disappears. But you still get the flicker. Most solutions online you'll find today will actually tell you to use this particular solution here, but it's not working. Uh, so there is a newer solution for nowadays browsers because there's been changes made to the browser, so this doesn't work anymore. And the new solution is to use this particular line here. So I'm gonna say position is going to be relative. And we didn't talk about position yet, so just go ahead and ignore that for now. Uh, we're also gonna go ahead and use a width we're gonna to set to zero. We're gonna say a height 
to zero. We're gonna set a overflow to hidden. And then we're also gonna do a set index. And we're gonna set this one to minus one. So doing it this way is different from using display none because we don't actually rip out the image from the web page because that's not working anymore. Um, but we actually just make it not appear inside the web page. It's in there, but it's not showing. So what I can do is I can actually go ahead and save this, go back inside my browser, refresh, and now you'll notice, whoops, we actually need to do one more thing. This does not need to be relative, but actually absolute, which is a little bit different. Um, again, we'll take a different episode in the future where we talk about position and how we can do things using position. Uh, for now, just go ahead and, and, and change what I just changed. Go inside the browser, refresh it, and now you'll notice that we don't get the flicker. So I can refresh it, and we don't get the flicker the first time that I actually put my mouse cursor into the image. So basically any kind of images that you want to preload into your website, you can do it this way. And if you have more than one image, you can just go ahead and copy the URL, paste it after just with a space between them and just create a path for another image. So if the original image is something I want to preload as well, I can just go ahead and put that name in there, save it. And now we have two images preloaded into the website. And this is the pure CSS way of doing it because there's also a JavaScript way of doing it. But since we're not doing JavaScript, we're just gonna do it using CSS. Now, I do want to show you one more thing, which is how to do a transition because I know you're gonna have fun with this. So I want to show you as many things as possible when it comes to having nice effects when it comes to doing this. So inside my image, what I can actually do is I can add a transition now transition is basically just going to allow for you to slowly transition to anything inside your hover effect down here. So in this case here, we can just write all, but you could also write a specific piece of styling. So instead of everything, we could also say just the width needs to transition, um, but it's more typical to just kind of do all unless you have a very specific transition in mind. So I'm gonna say all, ease in and out. And the basic difference between ease in, ease out, ease in and out is just basically when you put your mouse cursor inside the image, should it do it when you enter the image or when you exit the image or should it do both? So in this case here, we're doing both. And then you need to give it a time. So how long do you want the transition to be? Should it be a hundred milliseconds or should it be one second? or whatever you might want to do. In this case, here we're just gonna do 100 milliseconds. So with this, I can now go back inside my browser and instead of it being instant, it is slowly going to fade, as you can see here, when we do actually enter inside the image. We can, of course, if I go back in here, say we want to do one second. So this is going to be a lot longer. So if I go back inside, the, inside my browser, refresh it, you can now see that it takes quite a bit longer for it to actually do this transition effect. The last thing I want to mention before we end off the video is image sizes, because right now my particular image here with Bassett is actually a pretty big image. If I were to go back inside my HTML file here and just kind of go back until we have my image tag. So we're not actually putting a background image, but we're actually doing a image tag. And what I can do here is just completely remove my styling. So we just have the original size of the image, go back inside my website, and what you'll notice now is that this is my original size of my image. And that is pretty big. Did I actually zoom in? This is how it will look like inside your browser. Of course, whenever you have this big of an image that you load into your website, it is going to take longer for the website to load up. And the flickering that we did previously is going to be even heavier when you have this big image that you want to do something with. So if you're planning, to go inside your website and have the image be this size, then probably you should not use a big image. You should take the image into Photoshop or any other kind of image editing tool and size it down so it's a little bit more close to what you want to have inside your website. So it doesn't have to load in a big image every time that you're just using for small things. Let's say you're doing this little logo inside your website that's like this big, but the image file is like this big then it's gonna take up a lot of resources to load it in. And if you're using the same image in multiple pages and one has to be small, but on the other page, it has to be big, then have two different versions of your image. Don't use one big image because, well, I have to use a big version at some point too. So you're just gonna load in both, in both places. That's not gonna be good for your website. So with that said, this is how you insert images into your website. 
Um, <laughs> I hope it wasn't too confusing, but it's kind of a, a fun little thing to learn. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.